In the late 1980s, the struggles of the citizens of Eastern Bloc countries were rewarded with the failure of communism. As I record this, I'm on a magnificent river cruise up the Danube River from Bucharest, Romania to Budapest, Hungary, today in Belgrade, Serbia. Passing through Bulgaria, Serbia, and Croatia, I'm hosted by wonderful local guides into historical and cultural sites. With all the public relations fervor of a Disneyland tour bus driver. But one big catch. Each of our guides is free to tell us about their experience as young people in and around 1989 as communism was eradicated in Eastern Europe. The stories are personal and profound. Cornell, our Romanian host, told us of his involvement in the revolutionary movement to the point of being in University Square as Nicolae Ceausescu's military gunned down hundreds of young people while he and his friends sprinted toward the American Embassy for sanctuary. He's still plagued with dark dreams of this today. Polina, one of our Bulgarian hosts, argued with her parents for years over whether communism should be defeated or not. And Albina fights to keep Bulgarian youth from leaving her homeland for better conditions outside the Eastern Bloc nations. To a person, these individuals, I'd say between 45 and 55 years old, so maybe 18 to 25 at the time of their respective liberations, saw only good coming from the eradication of communism. Indeed, today they joke about life under communism. All of these nations are strewn with the industrial wreckage of the failed form of governance. Crumbling buildings, rusty roofs, fragile free market economies. In many ways, never fulfilling the economic dreams of the revolutionaries. Each will tell you they are far better off than they were before the fall, yet nowhere near where they expected to be by now some 29 years later. What may not have been understood at the time in haste to escape totalitarianist rule is the promise of opportunity is just that, and only that, not a promise of guarantees. And some are a little disillusioned. In the rural reaches of these countries, it seems not much has changed. They still make everything they need and grow everything they eat, only now they own their land again. They have, as one of our guides said, learned how to be poor under any form of governance. The challenge is that their youth are leaving. They're going to cities or leaving for other opportunities around the world. The area has been a pawn of many governments through the millennia. There were Tartar hordes, Huns, Goths, Visigoths, Romans, Ottoman Turks, and ultimately the communists have all had their way with the region. And today, they are a marvelous blend of all that history. From a tourist point of view, the area is devastatingly beautiful. The people are cordial and even friendly. They have a sad disposition, however, as you board the ship or the bus or the train and leave. For they're still there, trying to figure it all out. So go visit them. Not only do they want your tourism investments, mostly they just want your attention and to tell you their story. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.